Madam Chairman, I would request that we uh, delete the uh, school board policy on child abuse and neglect and postpone it because we're still working on some aspects of it and add a maternity leave request by one of our teachers. We'll call that item number 10. All right. Under new business. Is there anyone in the audience who will be wishing to speak to the school board tonight on any, um, anything other than something that's an agenda item? All right. Anything else that needs to be adjusted? All right, then we'll move on to a consideration of the minutes of our November 14th meeting. I trust that the board has had an opportunity to read those minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? All right, then do I hear a motion that we accept those minutes? So moved. Okay, Mr. Holt has moved that we accept the minutes of the November meeting. Mr. Leslie seconds. All in favor? Uh, Mr. LaBelle will give us the business manager's report. Thank you. On. Uh Section three of your agendas, page 20. Uh, tonight, I guess I'd like to spend some time not on revenues or expenditures in the general program, but mostly on pages, well, 22, the enrollments. If you notice, the elementary enrollments are up slightly from last month, four students. Unless you'd have questions on the revenues and expenditures. Are there any questions? Anybody? So I'd like to talk more on the school lunch and the uh, capital projects we've done for this year. Food service, uh, about the fifth page in your agenda. To date, or for the month of November, we had uh, cash receipts, receipts of 24,007, and we had expenditures of 48. What's happened is we've kind of caught up on unpaid bills that weren't paid uh, month in and the previous other two months. Uh, total for the year, we received 75000 in revenues for food services, and we have expenditures of 100000 I've passed out tonight a supplement to that, and I'd like to talk about that. It's comparing last year's uh, food service program with this year's for the months of September, October, and November. If you will notice that the revenues have increased by some $7,700. However, for the same period of time, our expenditures are up by $15,000. And why? Why? Mainly because our, well, our labor costs are up like $4,000. The food costs are up by $8,700. And the non-food supplies, which is your cleaning supplies, et cetera, are, have uh, increased by $3,000. Uh, what we're planning to do in the month of December, we're monitoring at the high school starting January, the month of January, we will be decreasing the hours, uh, the labor hours at the high school. What's happened this year, we've lost 50 students at the high school level. Last year in the same school, we lost another 50 students. So in the past two years, we've lost 100 students at an estimated expenditure or revenue, I should say, of $1.50 a piece a day, that's $750 a day. We need to look at the, the district-wide program, but right now we're focusing at the, at the high school and we're uh, and reducing labor hours. Our costs have to come down. Our costs are, are too great for the amount of money we're, put, we're receiving. At the same time, we're looking at the a la carte menus at the high school and we <coughs> plan to make some adjustments as to the, the prices. Nickel here, a dime there. We're, we're doing a study during the month of December that kind of identifies what it costs to, to, make, to make or put out or, you know, a certain sandwiches. And to that, we're going to, you know, add a, a reasonable markup to them so we can break even. The middle school, if you will go on to the third page of what I handed out tonight. The middle school this year is serving, like, in the hot lunch program, about double the, the meals it, it was last year. We have increased, I believe, the labor hours there by approximately one to two hours a day, which is not all that, that significant, but we're really, they're busy. That's a busy kitchen. We, at some point, 
uh, would like to talk to you people about updating some of the equipment in that kitchen. We have a proposal to the State Department where they would reimburse us or fund us 50% of equipment. And to date, that equipment list is like $72 or $7,500. It's basically a, a freezer, a, a stove, and a refrigerator to be mostly for the middle school. Uh, the Pond Cove Hot Lunch Program is about 700 meals above last year. Then you go down the list and you get to the middle school a la carte program, which for the same period of three months, we have our revenues are down by some $1,200. So we need, I'm sorry, that's nope. $2,800. That, that's only a la carte. Yeah. <clears throat> now, they've gone up substantially in hot lunch, is that correct? True. The because we not has only gone up, Peter, but with the hot lunch program, we're, we're charging a buck 15. Uh, this year we have instituted a salad bar at the middle school, which is, I think, quite popular. Is that called a la carte? Yeah. Uh, either or. Some students elect to buy just the salad bar for a dollar. Uh, other students through the hot lunch program uh, get the salad bar as an extra with no cost. But we'll, at some times, do not take, let's say, a vegetable or something. What, we, what we're doing also at the middle school this, through the month of December is looking at the, the salad bar has a cost uh, that we're, we're trying to figure out. I think we got it pinpointed, but it's like uh, $170 a week. Now we have to establish how many people are, are taking part of the salad bar that are paying that, that dollar a day and the people that are, that are just taking the salad bar as an extra towards their hot lunch. So they're in effect paying 15 cents for the salad bar. They're in effect not paying anything for the salad bar. Well, if they're paying a dollar 15, yeah, and getting a hot lunch, right? Somebody else goes through and just gets the salad bar for a dollar. There's only a there's oh, only a 15 cent said. differential. Maybe you could say then the hot lunch costs 15 cents. Yeah, I see. That what probably said. would yeah. be so another way to express it. Yeah, that's true. And I think what will probably come in in the month of January make some recommendations to you people as to what we'd like to do. There could be a combination of, of uh, items like an increased price at the middle school, Pond Cove, to $1.25. There could be a recommendation that people that do participate in the salad bar, <coughs> along with the hot lunch, pay an extra quarter for the salad bar. I know we'll have to, to put numbers down and figure this out. As far as, but our primary target right now, we feel is that we're losing the majority of the money is at the high school, where our labor costs are way above what they should be. So uh, you're going to have a plan by January? Yes, we will. By January, we will we'll address you people and you know, make recommendations to what we, rec we feel this needs to be done. But by, I'm sorry, but by January 2nd or 3rd, there will be a reduction in hours at the high school, in staff hours. We're looking at half hour a day for five ladies, which is two and a half hours a week, a day, I'm sorry. It's like $3,500 a year, but it's a start. Jan? Dee, do you know if there's any plan to allow kids to pay for lunch and or milk um, for an entire week rather than just day by day? The, we're setting up, uh, Mr. Toy's out of the, out of the district this, today, but I've called his office where hopefully setting up a meal, let's say for Thursday or Friday to address that. We need to set up a system where meal tickets are sold at a certain time of the week and that's it. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's much of a problem at the uh, Pond Cove Line School. As far as the high school, like I said, uh, we've received revenues to date of $36,000 and uh, I'm sorry, last year we received revenues of $36,000. This year we're at thirty-two nine. So, you know, we need to look at the, the revenues versus the, the cost. Did we take a price increase at the high school this year or we took a price increase for hot lunches? Very little. I've been told that some of the items were adjusted a nickel a dime, but not everything. Well, I don't think just adding a, a, a price or a cost to a certain product is the way out. We need to, to address, you know, uh, the labor costs. Uh, if we're going to serve uh, 430 kids a day compared this year compared to 
480 last year compared to 530 the year before, we need to do something. We just can't have the same number of staff. Charlie? If you look at the cost for the first three months and just food from in comparing it to last year, there's, you know, there's quite a bit of, quite a jump. Is that due to the yeah. change of the menu or is that just the cost of food? The cost of food has gone up, but uh, it, then again, it could be a, a combination of things. Uh, we need to look at menus. I, for one, might tend to believe that some of our menus are too much or are labor intense or something. We need to, to, to do a combination of things. Hopefully with a new director, we will be able to put things together and make uh, decent recommendations or changes. Because if you look at the difference, the food went up about 8,000, the labor yeah. only went up about four. Yeah. Do those children who take a salad with their hot lunch substitute it for a vegetable or take it in addition to their vegetable? Could be could be a combination. You might give them an option, you know, yeah. one or the other. But then, you know, with with the winter months, do your your uh, your uh, salad bar, the costs are a lot greater because of your cost of the vegetables. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions? Well, I'm pleased with the the fact that there are more. One of the problems we had last year was that we didn't have enough people eating at the school. We seem to have enough people eating at the school now, and now we're losing money. So somewhere along the line, we've got to get, get a balance adjust. thing somewhere. Maybe we're not used to serving that many kids. I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're losing a little bit more in every meal. We said we're going to make it up in volume, I guess. Well, that speaks for the quality of the food. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a tremendous change. Well, things have been great this year. Uh, the next page is the community services report, which is has received like $201,000 and expended $162,000. Then the next item of business is the 1989-90 uh, capital projects expenditures. For year to date, we had an appropriation of $600,000 and we have expended $369,000. Uh, through the process of the bids and that, we have saved like $25,500 on roof repairs, uh, new roofs, I should say, not repairs. That money will be carried over you know, into next, next year's uh, capital projects. Uh, going down the line, the asbestos, uh, we're kind of at a standstill. We have hired a, a firm that has, is going to write up some specs for us as to, to be in compliance with, this, with the federal government as far as the uh, O&M plan, which is observe and maintain. We need to, every six months, make a check in our buildings of the, the asbestos areas and report or write down in a format acceptable by the state as to the condition and the, you know, any change in the, in the, uh, in the way it's, uh, it sits. Uh, the state has assured us they will do all our priorities one and two for us. It's just a question of time. That's all that the major or the most uh, hazardous areas will be done by the state at no cost to the district. Are we on target with handicap accessibility in the middle school? Yes, the lifts should be in. We expected them the first or second week of December for the old section. Uh, during the month or during Christmas vacation, we are installing a handicap bathroom at the high school in the pool area and one at the middle school. Uh, we have completed all the, the ramps at the middle school. Next spring, we need to make uh, a couple ramps outside because there's no way into the building. So that's going to occur in the connector and by the principal's office, two of them. And then we'll need a ramp to the playground area. Yeah. However, uh, we'd like to wait on that because uh, we have to dig up the front of the old high school because we had a water problem, as you know, last year in the cafeteria. I talked to uh, Billy Jordan about cutting those trees down <coughs> and showed him the plan that we would like to bring it back to the, its original uh, landscaping. And he agreed. So we'll be cutting those trees down at an appropriate time. 
digging that up uh, probably in the spring, D, huh? We need to uh, do some uh, drainage work in the front of that building. Then we'll do the ramp at the same time. Would that also help the, the problems in the bathrooms in the middle school, in the old part? I don't think uh, they're connected, are they? Except for the water that was going in there. From possibly the one bathroom, the one that's out uh, aside from the cafeteria. Is there a plan to upgrade bathrooms? There's, I, I guess we need to set up a plan to, I don't know if you want to call it upgrade, but we need to do something to some of the bathrooms there. Uh, they've been around for a while, I guess. We've, you know, applied the paint. We've done what we could, but still, we need to do, probably get some new fixtures. Or that wasn't on our original list of, no, but, of repairs. But uh, you might see it coming up, though, through the budget process for next year. And then the rest of the, the projects is, like, uh, you know, pretty close as far as the, what was projected as to what was expended. Are the legal services ours or is that town? That's our share. This is uh, the $2,100 that we, that we paid council for uh, to set out or sell the bonds and stuff. Oh, okay. What about the tennis courts? Do you have a timeline on that? Tennis courts, from what I can understand, is that the, the final coat will be done in the spring. In time uh, for tennis season or afterwards? I believe not. Uh, the town manager, Michael, has helped me tremendously on this. He has taken the project you know, into his own hands. He's supervised the, the whole process along with the uh, engineers. Uh, I believe they have had some problems. They're addressing that. It's still, I know council for the town is looking into some matters. Uh, the courts will not be ready for the spring. Which means that we will have to find tennis courts practice in the community or in nearby communities at probably some cost. Who's responsible for the fact that the tennis courts have not been taken care of in time for that? Is that our problem or is that the contractor's problem? That's what council is going to tell us, I believe. I think that's what So that's undetermined right now? I, from what I can gather. It's, you know, it's, being, it's being looked into, put it that way. Costs have been looked at as to what would what would it cost for the Cape School Department to relocate their tennis for the spring season. Uh, you know, this was asked of us by the council and also by the engineers. Uh, there's problems, but I don't know if they'll be resolved or what the story is. Uh, as far as the the emergency lights at the high school. That project might be delayed for another year. Uh, what we're trying to do there too is get not only with uh, with CMP get a rebate, but also to to write up a grant or have it accepted under the energy management grant that we're presently working under, and get like a 50/50 funding. So that's about it for the capital expenditures. Any questions? No, so all in all, the projects were were decent. They came in pretty much under under cost. Back to the town courts again. When that went out to bid, was it to be completed for spring sports? Was that was the be, intention? I believe there was a date set in there for fall completion, pending weather conditions and everything else, of course. Uh, see, what it is, is is on the tennis courts, that, that final or that third layer, I guess. You get your rough base, you get your fine coat, and that, that final layer, which is, I don't know, anywhere from quarter inch to half inch, I believe. Uh, cannot be applied on the surface till after 30 days after the the uh, the finished coat of the hot top is is, a, is on, and with you know this part of the country this just didn't happen with the weather conditions and that. So what was decided is that you know after the the fine coat of hot top was finally applied, that's where it stopped. So next year they need to put the fine colored. Uh, Coating along with the lines and the fence has got to go back up. But still, quite a bit of work left to be done. So the delay was due to weather and not to problems they encountered when they get into excavating. I can't answer that. Who but can? Will, huh? Who, who can answer the, that? I'm who? sure the town manager probably could. We'll talk to him. But I will. I know I can find out and put out a memo to you people. That's what I'll do. Is you know check with Michael and 
it's from what I can understand, it's it's in the hands of an, of, an, of council, and they're looking at all the aspects of the contract to see all right. just you know what did happen. Okay. So, what do you perceive as being unspent money? Probably, what will be a, our balance at the end? Good question, Loretta. I mean, do you see all that we'll need less money next year as as our uh, as an appropriation? Will there be? I think that's that's a possibility. What, what I've done so far this year with uh, with Gary and Charlie is we we started a list to to finish up what the intent of you know the, the uh, 1.2 million dollars was. Uh, on that list, we've kind of deleted like some of the uh, requests. The previous requests were like for high school flooring. Uh, in the media center, which you know, I feel that rug is in, is in decent shape. In that, uh, the fuel oil storage tanks, where we need to update two of them next year, we might have to. We had a hundred thousand dollars, I think, set aside for that. We might have to increase that. That's coming in like at four dollars and fifty cents a gallon to replace, to to remove and replace, due to the new you know regs on the uh, federal level as far as monitoring the the tanks and stuff like that. So I mean, some of these items will go up and down, but I think the 600, I think, will be adequate. And could be less. You mean the second 600? That's correct. Well, because all of these, most of these monies, except like the asbestos, is still going on. We need to spend. We'll be spending some more money through the uh, for the engineers as far as running up a plan for us. The tennis courts, you know, I believe that came in like at one. 30 plus the uh, engineering fees. I don't know what that's going to run, but the, the base bid was 130. Then, you know, a lot of the other projects, whatever you see there, will be carried forward. Right. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. LaBelle. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, our high school representatives, I see they're both here tonight. Would you two like to come forward and give us some comments about what's happening at the high school? Well, first of all, um, on November 21st and the 22nd, we had the annual Seniors Talent Show. And um, this is held every year, and, and it's a variety of things from skits to musical acts or whatever, um, put on by the seniors of, of the high school. And it's a lot of fun, and it's a chance for them to showcase all their talents, which they do have a lot of. So it was, it was an impressive show, and I know we all had a good time. Um, this has also been a busy week, and will be a busy week for the band. Um, they play today at the middle school for the entire school, and on Thursday, they'll be putting on two shows, one in the afternoon for the high school, and then at night is their winter concert. It's going to be held at 7.30 in the auditorium. Um, and also this week, in this, these past couple of weeks, um, for the speech and debate team before the Christmas break has been also busy, um, it, we did manage to win both meets, um, the second at Wiscasset, and we hosted the meet the, this past Saturday, the ninth, at the high school. So. Um, the team took both of those meets, and it looks like a successful season for them as well. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Well, as you know, all the winter sports teams are off to good seasons. Uh, those teams include swimming, indoor track, basketball, and ice hockey. And the number of spectators, including interested parents and students, expresses the great interest in the success of all teams, and we wish them all good luck. And the SAC is putting on a faculty appreciation dinner, which will be held December 18th, which is Monday at 6 o'clock at the high school cafeteria. And it's going to be a buffet-style dinner, and all the teachers were invited and are encouraged to bring a guest along to share the evening with them. The SSC is trying to get a band together composed of high school students, which will supply the entertainment for the evening. That should be interesting, as well as entertaining. And it's the first dinner in a long time, and the SSC, as well as uh, many other students, feel that it's important, as well as necessary, to let the faculty know how much we appreciate them. So it should be a fun evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Pelletier. Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, spend just a few moments this evening uh, discussing uh, what's happening to uh, statewide educational goals. And uh, I've used my own superintendent working papers. And uh, just so that uh, you're not confused, if you look at the goals and you see uh, a plus, a zero, and a minus in front of them, uh, this is some work that we've done regionally. Uh, if it's a plus, we've taken a position on that somewhere in, in historic uh, background. 
If it's a minus, we've, we were against it. And if it's a zero, we've never addressed it. And the think abouts are things that we have added. But I bring this to your attention for one reason. The superintendents are reviewing the educational goals regionally. The, uh, the governor and the commissioner are going around to not all of the regions, but uh, they've been to Bangor, Portland, and Augusta so far. And they're discussing this with school board members and citizens. It's interesting, the thing, same thing's being done in most other states. It's a result of the summit. And I bring it to your attention because um, sometime next year, I suspect, they're going to put the goals in some kind of priority. And uh, they're going to probably ask us to react to the final paper that comes about. This probably will be the direction for the schools in the state for the next decade. I expect that a great deal of energy will be spent on this. And I just bring it to your attention to, so that if you read things in the paper, you will know uh, what kind of positions people are taking. These are very preliminary positions the superintendents are taking. I suspect you'll be seeing something coming from your own association, the school boards association, shortly. But uh, this is going to be probably the big thing educationally, particularly next year. That's all I wanted to say, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. Are there any comments from the members? Any comments? I, the one comment I would like to make is it appears that the only issue of which they are unanimously opposed to is an increase of instructional time, which I found. Was, was this a vote taken by the superintendents, or did this just seem to be a no, leaning? That, that was a position that was taken after a, a great deal of debate. And uh, while it's hard to speak for 121 superintendents, it was uh, they objected to uh, time without something that spelled out quality. And uh, that was their hang up with the superintendent. That we should do something about the quality of the time and not the time. And this was taken at the last minute. Uh, however, uh, they were opposed to uh, the additional time. But that's the basis of it. They wanted to deal with quality first and time second. All right, the elementary school consortium. Consortium. Uh, Barbara is going to be late, and she's as enthusiastic about this as I am. And I would ask, I'll say a few words, and I'd ask if she does come, she's watching her child perform something here in the community. And uh, if she comes, I'm sure she'd like to say a few words. So could I say a few words about it, and when she comes, ask, let her say a few words as well? Yes. Please. This is something that I can hardly control my enthusiasm for, which is no way to end a sentence. Winston <laughs> Churchill did it, so why not? Uh, this uh, would put us with approximately 30 lighthouse elementary schools. Uh, we had to apply for this, and we had to be selected, and it's a very select group of elementary schools all of which are in the country with the exception of one in Hong Kong. And uh, I don't suspect any of their meet meetings will be in Hong Kong. But uh, we have a team that's going to go to the first meeting. And uh, some of the things that this consortium has been doing has been highly impressive. And I'm in your packet, you will see a, a number of uh, newsletters, uh, the kinds of things they're talking about. They range all the way now from Maine to Texas and from California to, uh, I don't know, the northernmost. Northernmost? Northernmost. That would be Maine, I Maine. think. So, so I'm, I'm just so pleased about this, and I'm sure that Barbara will say a number of things about it. Uh, we have a first meeting, I believe, uh, February. February? The end of February. End of February. And uh, I'm sure that the team that's going to be meeting will come back and give us a full report. How often does this newsletter come out? 
Do you have any I'm idea? not certain. I'm not certain how often. And I'm not certain of, of all of the, uh, uh, the communication devices either, you know, whether it be video or joint uh, meetings. I think there are two meetings a year, to the best of my knowledge. I had a long chat with the superintendent, who's the president of this, who's from New Jersey. And uh, I have a feeling it's, uh, it'll, uh, it will help us, and I want to say this as delicately as I can, uh, to, uh, it'll prevent us from being parochial. It'll give us an opportunity to deal with 32 schools in the country, and one internationally, who are, we think, on the leading edge of what's going on in education. And uh, I can't think of anything any more exciting. And I would hope that over the years, uh, a good number of our staff could participate, you know, in whatever they do. But we'll keep you fully informed and give you a full report on the next meet at the end of the meeting. All right, and if Mrs. Powers comes in, we'll ask for her input at that time. Uh, I'd like to tell you a little, I'd like to tell the public about a, a meeting, a workshop that the board conducted a week and a half ago. It was a middle school workshop where we discussed the middle school concept. It was presented by a group of eight teachers and administrators at the middle school. Uh, very well presented. They started by telling us some of the national trends and, and research on middle school education. And then they talked with us specifically about the middle school program here in Cape Elizabeth. We talked about program, programming at Cape Elizabeth Middle School, uh, resources and how they're being used, using the concept, the middle school concept, uh, teacher education, workshops, uh, we had a large turnout from the public, parents and interested uh, adults, and good discussion followed. Uh, and I would like to thank all the people who prepared so well for this. It was uh, obvious that it, it had taken a lot of time and effort on their part, and I think everyone who attended that workshop left feeling as though they had a clear picture of where the middle school was going and what their goals were. And uh, I'd like to thank them very much for, for giving us such a, an excellent evening of information about the middle school. We'll move on to old business. We have a consideration of a change in a policy, which is a school board policy on attendance and truancy. This is our second reading, so this will, will be um, approved or not approved this evening. Um, This policy concerns, uh, actually there's only a small amendment to the, the uh, present policy that we have. It's on attendance and truancy and there has been an additional uh, phrase inserted in this which says a planned absence for a personal or educational purpose about which the school and teachers have been notified in advance by procedures specified in each school. In other words, uh, an excusable absent, a person is excused when the absent is for uh, several reasons, one of which is a planned absence, and we have asked that they notify the school and their teachers ahead of time, and that each individual school will have a procedure which will be made clear to the student in that school of how and what they want that student to do while they're, they're absent. So this is the addition to the policy that we have, and this is our second reading. Uh, do I hear a motion that this be accepted? I move to accept the, the change in the policy. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. Now, is there any discussion about this <coughs> policy that we are addressing this evening? So this handout that we received from Mr. Miles is essentially the, the high school's way of handling their attendance policy and their particular needs. Yes, this has been given to, we, we have two, two sheets. One is our policy and the yeah. other is something that Mr. Miles handed out to us before the meeting, which is simply 
uh, an informational piece of paper that lets us know what the high school is planning to do when uh, a student notifies the school that they will be they okay. will not be to in attendance. implement the change in the policy right okay. we have not heard from the middle school or the pond cove school and i'm sure they will you know as they decide upon you know what their procedure will be dealt they will inform us okay. but the policy is what we'll be voting on tonight okay. and that does not have anything to do with the sheet that mr miles okay. has given us any discussion talked about this last month. I think it's clear to everyone on the board, it appears. Mr. Holt? Was this reviewed, Frank, by the uh, student council? Because <clears throat> at the workshop that we had at the high school, uh, there was some discussion on this. Mr. DeFusco and I met with some representatives from the student advisory committee this week and talked about it. Um, we have been following this since the opening of school, essentially what you have there so that this is not, quote, new in that sense of, of some change. Right. Um, but uh, when we also had some students on the committee that, that essentially uh, helped us review our, our attendance problems last summer and uh, as we began to think about revisions in the attendance procedures at the high school. And what the, the essential, the actual planned absence form that we talk about in that procedure is something that the schools had for several years, but, but I don't think we've publicized it as well as we have this year, and we've had quite a number of students use it. And what we're simply trying to do is encourage people to let us know in advance when they're going to be absent, if it's not one of the, the obvious excusable absences like medical reasons or a medical appointment. So is, this, is this information going to be communicated homeward? Uh, I, we can include that as part of the as part of one of the parent newsletters. Um, I agree, I think we can do that in January. We've sort of been waiting to get this all together before we sort of sure. publicize it. A version of it was, and, and many of the essential features of this were in our student handbook that we handed out in, in August, so at the beginning of school. Actually. So there's, as I say, much of this is not quote new. Mm -hmm. It's just we've revised a few. Uh, sections, wording sections, some of which we talked about at the, um, the board hearing in October, the workshop. Thank you. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we accept the school board policy on attendance and truancy. No further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? All right, motion passes. All right, we will move on to new business. Tonight, we are going to elect our superintendent for the coming year. This is somewhat of a formality, actually. We, uh, Dr. Pelletier is on the second year of a three-year contract, but each December, in accordance with Title 20A, uh, it is uh, required that the superintendent be elected for the coming year. And at the present time, that's what we're uh, prepared to do. In the spring, uh, his contract is discussed, but at this time, we do renew his contract if it is the wishes of the board. Do I hear a motion that we uh, elect our superintendent for the coming year? Second. Mrs. Soland moves. Mr. Leslie seconds. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Were there any other nominations? <laughs> <laughs> any, any nominations no other nominations? <laughs> you want it again, Daryl. That's the question. <laughs> a landslide. <laughs> Mandate. All in favor. May I? Yes, there is a question. May I have a question? Yes, this sir. form that has to be sent to the uh, superintendent, the state, has the state, um, who makes that out? The superintendent's office? Superintendent's the office, and the chairman has to sign it. The superintendent has to sign it. Oh. The commissioner has to sign it. He has to sign that I'm certified. All right. Is that clarified? Any other discussion? All right. And all in favor of the election of the superintendent, please raise your hand. Okay. And all opposed. And while we're on this subject, I would like to uh, uh, correct some information that was written in a Portland newspaper recently. Um, although Dr. Pelletier would hope that this were true, he is not the highest paid superintendent in the state of Maine. Uh, there was an incorrect comparison made in that article, and uh, that is not a, a true 
statement and so I felt like that it would be appropriate at this time to at least let our public know that 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 was not correct all right we have a calendar for the 1991 budget in your packet Anybody have that So it will be important that these dates be noted. I'm going to read these dates because we, uh, we certainly welcome any public participation in these board workshops. The first one will be on Thursday, March the 8th at 7.30. And that will be a board workshop on the middle school budget. The second one will be March the 12th at 7.30. Uh, when we will be meeting on the high school budget on Thursday March 15th and 7:30, we will we will be meeting on the, about the elementary the Pond Cove budget Saturday March 17th at 9 a.m. will be com community services curriculum career ladder and district-wide accounts part of the budget and then if needed uh, a final board workshop on the complete budget will be on Saturday March 24th at 9 a.m. Uh, there will be a town council and school board joint budget meeting on Thursday, April 12th at 6, and on Monday, April 23rd at 7.30. And then the public hearing will be on Monday, May 14th, 1990. And by then we'll all <laughs> be very tired, I'm sure. The, the public hearing uh, on May 14th, I'm writing in my own calendar here. It has no time. It has no time, right. yes. Uh, I assume it's... Is it That's still tentative, but we'll update. All right. Question mark. So that is right. Okay. So if you all will please make notes of these in your calendars. I think we have a, a full spring here. Okay, Dr. Pelletier, I think we have uh, a, a maternity leave. Yes, absence. we have a maternity leave. I'd like to recommend that. The board grant maternity leave to January 3rd, 1990 to Deborah Jordan Pearson, who is pregnant, from uh, January 3rd on. Okay. Do I hear a motion that we accept Mrs. So move. Second. Jordan. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. We have some further dates which we need to uh, make note of. School, next school board meeting will be January 9th in the council chambers at 7.30. And then we have a, a school board workshop on Thursday, January 25th in regard to the gifted and talented K-12 program. And we're also attempting in, uh, to uh, get a uh, workshop on the high school. And uh, I'm working with the high school principal, and we're trying to determine the best time. As you know, they're, they change semesters and a host of things. But uh, we're going to try to select two dates, and I could bring them to you at the next meeting. Okay. What time is the workshop on the 25th? On the 25th, 7.30. 7.30. Also at the gym, yes. Mr. I just get a couple pieces of information. Uh, Mr. Holt, myself, and Mr. Greer are in the process of negotiating a secretary aid, a teacher aid contracts for next year. Plus, last Thursday, the food service employees did vote to have the Cape Elizabeth Teachers Association represent them at table. So they have formalized and have joined the teachers union okay. so there will be a separate bargaining unit and when is their cut they're there uh, well, right, right well, now we have like a an agreement with them as to salaries and that that's still in effect till June 30th of 1990 so at some point in January we'll have to go to table and negotiate we haven't had anything for, uh, formal requests for negotiations from the uh, no, but the, the vote just occurred last <laughs> Thursday so okay. And there was like uh, 11 members voted, 10 to 1 was the vote results. All right, any other? Mr. In reference to the um, aides and secretaries, that packet we received, is yeah. that our proposal to, 
to the bar to the yeah. bargaining unit. Okay. Subject to change as soon oh, as I hear. understand, but that's <laughs> our counter proposal. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Pelletier, there there's been a, a request by uh, uh, some some parents and also some board members to to have a little more information about the usage of the half day when the students are out each every other Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's planned throughout the year. I mean, it's not it's put together in advance. So could we have some information in the, at the January meeting about how that time is used in each of the schools and Certainly, maybe perhaps yeah. the subject of the uh, in-service day? I've talked to uh, our curriculum director along with our career ladder director. And uh, we'll give you a full report on how those days have been used. All right, thank you. And uh, I find them extremely valuable. Uh, at our last administrative council meeting, we were bemoaning the fact that we, we could use 10 more days. And I uh, probably should not have suggested it, but I suggested maybe we need a longer school year. <laughs> However, I don't think I'll present that formally at this point in time. I think that you do well not to do this. <laughs> <laughs> right, any other business? Yes. Can I ask Mr. Miles? if we're online with keeping the seniors that are in academic about graduating. Uh, there were, there were, I think, um, only six seniors that failed a course at the end of the first quarter. Uh, I think I have my statistics correct. Uh, when I talked with the guidance director and uh, uh, those people were, were both notified in writing and also by phone of, of the potential prop uh, there that lies ahead if that continues. So yes, we are on top of that and I, I think that we have a good mechanism of communication with student and parents to make sure that at least people are apprised of, of progress or lack thereof and there won't be the same kind of surprises as some people felt there were last June. Well, I think we're on top of that. Thank you. Anything else? Any other business? Well, I guess as an early Christmas gift to ourselves, we will adjourn early this evening. Is that correct? Okay. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? Second. Third. Fourth. Favor. Favor. <laughs> All in favor. Nice Meeting is adjourned. Oh, is this, this is the first. This is the first. This is the new record.